Hello, everybody. Hello from Bryson City. Um, live again today with a, another video. Uh, art lesson this morning will be watercolor. Um, I've got a few things set up, and today I'm not at home. Ooh. Uh, I am in the print studio here at the school, so let me turn the camera around here and give you all a quick tour. So this is our printmaking studio here at the school. So back here in the back, those were our two challenge proof. This is an etching press, and we can talk. I'm probably going to end up doing a little, you know, something with this tomorrow. But um, this is a board shear. This is the oldest piece of equipment we have in here, and it's pretty cool. Um, it's for cutting book board. Book board is about the thickness of mat board. It's hence why you have the, uh, the the big blade that comes down through here. But this would have been used to cut the book board, slide it in, chop it off, and then uh, they would have covered it with cloth to make um, book covers and stuff. These are our two challenge proof presses. So, of course, on this you do printmaking. And the way that these work... This carriage goes all the way back here, and let me lower that part down. Okay, so you would have type or an image or a plate here in the bed of the press. Ink would be on these rollers, and then your paper gets fed in right up here like this. So you feed your paper in just like that. Push down on the foot pedal down here which is here, and when you push down, it raises up these rollers, right? these little grabbers right here, and that's what holds your paper in place. So your paper would be here, grab this big handle, and then turn all the way to the end. And when, it comes, when you get to the end, your paper would come out, and you would have a print, something similar to this. Tortoise and the Hare. This was done by um, Howard Juanita when he was taking a printmaking class when we used to have classes up in Cherokee. So all this that you see here would have been printed using the proof press. So we'll go over more of that tomorrow. We've got... Um, some other cool stuff in here I'll show you guys uh, tomorrow as well, including um, Cherokee Syllabary Type. I have a couple folks that come in and have been doing some work with that, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. But for today, I'm going to give you guys a quick primer in watercolor. So I have a few things laid out here on the table for you to see. Um, let me go ahead and get everything squared away here. And here we go. So... This is my basic watercolor setup. I have these brushes. These are specifically watercolor brushes. These are water media brushes, meaning they could be used for gouache, acrylic paint, uh, any kind of paint that you would um, thin with water. Tempera, um, craft paint, any of those kind of paints. That's what these brushes are for. These are specifically water brother, <laughs> water brother, watercolor. And as you can see, this is a it's a natural, natural hair brush. Um, you can find really nice watercolor brushes are usually made out of um, squirrel hair. But, so I have my pan of watercolors. I've had this um, for many, many years. Um, if I remember right, I think I received this in, um, I want to say 96, 97 I got this. Uh, when I was doing my undergrad at uh, WCU. So, as you can see, I don't paint watercolor often enough. I need to use this up. <laughs> but um, next is, of course, is watercolor paper. Um, this is just pretty simple watercolor pad from, um, uh, I think I got this at Michael's. So you can, uh, you can do the same kind of thing. But, and I already have a watercolor in here that was done. But... Um, I'm going to pe peel that off and get out of the way, but the paper is a little bit thicker than drawing paper, and 
This is what you want to do your watercolor on. And then, in order to get started, I have two pencils. I have a 2H pencil that I'm actually going to draw with. There it is. And then a 2B pencil, just to, for review. The B meaning um, black and H meaning hardness. And we want to use the 4H pencil to draw with when we start our watercolor. So, let me get my camera set up here. So you also want to make sure that you have a cup of water with watercolors. You can also do this with acrylics. So, but to start off, I'm just going to draw um, a little landscape in here. It might be very light and I'll hold it up here when I get finished. Okay. So I have a really basic landscape. And let me hold it up so you, can, you might be able to see it, but I have some mountains. And a couple clouds coming up behind the mountains. Just really quick sketch. And as you can see, that 4H pencil is very light. So, so now what we want to do, when you start off, you want to go with your lightest first. So I'm going to pull out a big brush, a little bit of water, and go with this blue. On your watercolor trays, if it has lids like this, even the um, Crayola, the old Crayola set, you can use that lid to kind of intensify your color and even the mixed colors. Right now, I'm just using this blue, and we're going to come through. Um, I do not wet my paper beforehand. Some people do that, but for this, I'm not going to do that. And so I'm just going to start at the edge of the cloud and kind of pull out. I'll add a little water to this as I go. All right. Just like that. So next, I'm going to fill in these mountains. Um, I'm going to say, let me get this green here that I have, because I'm going to say it's a little bit more springtime. So there we go. I'm going to just go ahead and do the whole area, even though I had multiple mountain ranges. I'm going to do the whole area in this green and I'm going to stretch out the paint I'm going to pull it into all areas so if it gets light that's okay just like that there we go so for the next part I'm going to get a little bit different color this is a darker green and I'm going to come in with a darker green um, when we talked about shapes and shading, I want to say that the light, as you can see, it's kind of already lightening up here. So I'm going to say the light's coming from this way. So, wet side of these mountains. You see the water because there's a little bit, it's a little wet there. The paint will diffuse, be a little bit more interesting. I also have this brighter green, so we'll come through with a little bit of that. Using the brush turned on an angle like this, just a couple quick little marks.
Now we'll clean that one out. So when you clean your brush out, just make sure you get all the paint out. And you want to push it up against the edge to squeeze the water out. Just like that. When you're finished with your brush, make sure you let it dry. So now I'm going to get two smaller brushes here. So with these smaller brushes, um, I'm going to put in some other detail and some other, other color here. So. Let's go with uh, a little bit of this red. Put a little bit of this red, a little bit more water. And then we're gonna come through here and then just uh, Darker blue will mix this in with the red and more water. And I'm going to go on the back side of these mountains over here and use it like a shadow. Now, one last little, one more little touch up detail. I'm going to go back into this blue here. And this blue here. And I'm going to come through and add a little detail to these clouds. Put them out to dry. And there we go. Quick little watercolor. That's all you got to do. Um, something else you can do when you get finished, you can come back in with a pencil if you want to, a darker pencil or even um, a marker. And you can draw other things on top of this. It's always really cool to do too. Um, if you go really wet, instead of the brighter, thicker lines, you can make all sorts of, um, you know, runny, you know, more atmospheric kind of effects going on. So all sorts of stuff. So, so yeah, don't forget to um, post your pictures in the comments below. And um, let me know what other kinds of... Um, classes and stuff you guys want to do for the next couple of weeks um, I'm probably tomorrow uh, I think I'm going to um, I'll be back here at the pottery studio or at the uh, printmaking studio um, and we might have a little conversation about Cherokee printing um, if not tomorrow then maybe Thursday so 
I got to look at the schedule and see what all's going on. But uh, and then I know a few other people mentioned some other stuff about um, drawing hands. Um, we might be able to do some printmaking too. I have a couple of projects that um, would involve things you could find around the house. So, yep, like I said, just let me know in the comments any other um, class ideas, anything like that, um, and post your pictures, and I'll see you next time. Everybody stay safe. Have a great week.